starting off with Teenage Mutant Ninja or Hero Turtles, depending upon what side of the pond you were on, Konami had a really good spell of producing high quality beat em ups that would scroll from left to right, whether you had a gun or a sword or whatever in your hand. Although Capcom had different ideas around right about 1991. And then 12 months after Street Fighter 2 hit the arcades, Midway decided to bring out a very small, unknown game that no one would really care about. What Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter 2 basically did though was take away a lot of the momentum from some of the high quality games that Konami released round about this time. And I thought it was time that we go and have a look back at some of the ones that some people may have missed, but hopefully a lot of people remember. So join me as I take a trip down memory lane in some of the greatest beat-em-ups that Konami released. It was really the turtles that kicked it all off back in 1989. The TV show had aired in America and Europe two years earlier, so the popularity of the series was high, and it received rave reviews and was in the top of the American arcade charts for nine months in 1990 after release. It follows four turtles that I'm sure you all know the names of, um, and their mentor Splinter and their friend April O'Neil, etc, etc. And it was great for its time. You had four player cabinets, with the exception of Japan, who only, as a cost cutting exercise, had the two player cabinets, but the option to choose which turtle you wanted to play. And this spawned a sequel in 1991 called Turtles 2 Turtles in Time, where you can see that the animation is more crisp, it's more fluid, there's more to it. The, the, the general premise of the game is the same, but it just looks a bit sharper. But what you then, when you start digging in a bit more, you start to see that uh, there are actually five main motherboards associated with all of the games we're going to talk about today. But there were variations of those motherboards. The original TMNT motherboard spawned the following games. Aliens. In terms of scrolling beat-em-ups, we have Aliens, the game adaptation of the horror film. We also had uh, Crime Fighters, which is a really, really early version of Vendetta, which has really bad collision detection. Devastators, which is sort of a prequel to G.I. Joe, which they would release three years later. You also had uh, Spy, which was uh, short for Special Project Y, which looked like a a not so great version of Namco's Rolling Thunder, I think was the best way to describe it. But in terms of all the other games that came out off of this motherboard or variations of it, here's a quick list of the rest. Oh, and we mustn't forget Missing in Action, which is basically a younger version of Green Beret in which you can go in multiple directions. Now we move on to the X-Men motherboard, which starts off strangely enough with The Simpsons, the 11th best game in the arcades in Japan of 1991. It was also the first arcade game uh, of any Simpsons type in North America and it stars the whole family trying to get Maggie back from Monty Burns 
and Smithers after Maggie accidentally uses a big expensive jewel that Smithers has stolen as a pacifier. Multiple levels, including lots of references to the cartoon series. As I mentioned earlier, however, Street Fighter 2 came out in this year, which meant that they had to release more games and come out fighting. And come out fighting they did, because they did release Vendetta this year. And that, believe it or not, we had mentioned earlier that, it, that Crime Fighters felt like it was an unofficial prequel to Vendetta. Well, actually, Vendetta was the sequel to Crime Fighters. It was just kept as a standalone game. Um, it's very Final Fight-ish, um, and it was censored in some countries, but it was given a really um, non-censored version in other areas. Uh, some enemies being able to apparently lick and dry hump each other when you're beating the crap out of them. So, we leave that one alone. Uh, but what it did do was it was one of the first beat-em-ups of its type to allow punching and kicking of the enemy while they were on the ground. Uh, and after the game was finished, it would then give you one extra level where all the bosses are resurrected and you'd have to beat them to death as well. Then the game would loop and it would be on a harder difficulty, so it could potentially go on for ages. But you'd have to have the mental capacity to keep that going. But this wasn't the only big hitter this year. X-Men featured on GameSpot's 2004 list of one of the greatest arcade games of all time. You had to rescue Professor X and Kitty Pride from Magneto using any of the six X-Men that were available, Cyclops, Colossus, Wolverine, Nightcrawler, Dazzler or Storm. The reason there were six is because some cabinets were able to take up to six players simultaneously, but most people went for the four traditional cabinet or the two player uh, adapted cabinet. The actual cartoon style was based on the 1989 cartoon X-Men Pride of the X-Men and it was released on the PS3 and Xbox 360 back in 2010 as a, an arcade conversion which has since now obviously been taken down. But uh, it played very very well. In Japan in fact at the time of release they listed X-Men as being both the third most successful table arcade unit and the seventh most successful upright arcade unit of the year. Even IGN, the mighty IGN, gave the console ports of the game 7.5, saying the game is incredibly simple and repetitive, yet it works. <laughs> I did notice one thing about the mutants though, as much as they have their abilities to have claws coming out of their hands or be able to change the weather, they can't get away from the basic laws of physics when they're walking across a bit of ground and don't watch out where they're going. The only other game to come off this particular board was the madcap racing game Escape Kids, which is perfect because we're going to escape from this one and move on to the second one now. As we'd already mentioned before, one of the motherboards that was used was from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles franchise and this is where we get to the second one. Now we already know about Turtles in Time and we'll briefly hint upon that again uh, in a little while but I had to get a guilty pleasure out of the way because I put so many credits into Sunset Riders that it had to come up first on this list. It follows the story of Steve, Bob, Billy and Carmano as the, uh, the, the great four, because we can't see other things for contractual reasons, as they put right the Wild West by taking out every bandit known to man, woman or child. Some of you will remember the even the 
the most well-known parts of the first level, like running over all the bison uh, for your life as you try and frantically stay alive. Uh, the second level, on the horse, jumping over logs, shooting whatever ever comes your way. It had such a great vibe about it. I loved this game so much. Played at the arcades on a weekly basis. Um, and if I could, I would still go back to it today. It's also worth noting that the game did come out on the 16-bit consoles. When it did come out on those consoles, however, the amount of game that you got for your money was a lot less. You got half the levels and half the characters. As I said, we're already hinted on uh, TMNT2, so we'll not delve too far into that other than it came out on this motherboard. One thing that did come out though, which was a very big surprise, no pun intended, is Surprise Attack, which is based on a sort of shinobi slash shadow dancer kind of uh, gaming mechanic. So in Surprise Attack, you're a character called John Ryan and you're trying to save the world, as is usual for a game of this style. Yeah, but it wasn't the only uh, thing that was isolated only to Japan in this year, as it was also the game Quiz Gakamon no Susume. As for those games outside of Japan, however, we have the following. rounding off this particular motherboard, we feel that staying in space is probably the best thing to do as we progress onto the penultimate one, but it's not without its risks. Old troopers begin their invasion of the planet world, his home planet. God, the slithering pack of belt bums! Look at them, mateys! How can they do such a thing? In the anniverse, we'll be safe from those warped brain toads. Attention all hands, battle stations. Let's croak some toadies! I suppose it makes sense that with the Zexx motherboard, we have more space-age games, such as Bucky O'Hare, based on the cartoon series from the 90s. They hired the original cast to do the cutscenes for the game itself, and the game plays pretty much as you'd expect. It is very similar to Sunset Riders, except it's more space age with phaser blasters and obviously cartoon characters that are maybe not quite so human, apart from Willie Duet until most recently I didn't even realise that Willie Duet was a cartoon name, because uh, if you say it fast enough, it's obviously Willie Duet. I didn't know that until now. That's quite scary actually. I'm going to go and lie down. Second in our cartoon brawler trilogy is Wild West Cowboys of Moo Mesa, which was a cartoon series that only lasted for two seasons. But Ryan Brown, the artist behind it, who was also behind some of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles work, was heavily involved in the creation of the game. What we got was a much more cartoon styled version of Sunset Riders, but that's not to say that that's a bad thing. In fact, it's not a bad thing at all. The final one in the trilogy 
uh, as you can see, is Asterix, the well-known French comic book created by René Goscinny and Alberto Derso. It's been around for a long, long time, and out of the two of them, at least one of the originators was still alive until last year. It follows Asterix and Obelix as they battle all of the Romans to free their homeland. All of the usual cartoon trademarks of Asterix are included in here. Dogmatics is here, and it just it just plays exactly like the cartoon. But what I did notice is I tried to do a playthrough, and it only let me put in three credits, and then a game over screen came up. So unless it's trying to be really, really evil, it's a hard, hard game. As for the game named after the motherboard, ZXX was Konami's answer to R-Type. You had your space shooter with your little attachment at the front that could attach at the back, that could fire on its own. But this is way harder than Irem's original R-Type, I do have to say that. But that's enough from this motherboard, other than giving you the best of the rest. Lethal Enforcer. motherboard in this selection is the Mystic Warriors motherboard which is basically Sunset Riders with swords and it's a very good game to boot. There was even a section of this game that made me think I was watching the intro to The Spy Who Loved Me but then I thought surely not, this can't be right. On second thought, maybe I am. It also has a cheeky little nod in the first level to the cowboy game that we've already mentioned in this video. What would you get if you mixed Fallout and Final Fight? Chances are you would probably get Violent Storm. You can choose one of three players to fight against a gang that have surfaced after the end of World War III, which has left the world in ruin. Uh, and your task is to basically get rid of the gang and save all the normal people from being terrorised by them. It plays very well, it plays a heck of a lot like Final Fight. Some of the stages even have that feel of Capcom's classic. But it's a game in its own right, and it is very well done. An honourable mention must also go to Monster Mollers, which is kind of like a beat em up, but mixed with a little bit of scrolling, because it's, it's kind of hard to describe really. Uh, there's multiple stages, but there's only one or two enemies in each stage, because it's almost like Konami have taken all of the minions out and given them a day off, and just said to the boss guys, do you know what, just hang about, you guys make up a game amongst yourselves, we'll throw in a protagonist and off you go, and this is what it came up with. The only two games left off of this motherboard are Gaiapolis, which is sort of like a top-down, almost commando point of view, role-playing hack and slash, I would suppose? And the other one is Marshall Champion, which is a beat-em-up that really is not that great, but I'll let you decide.
And that, as they say, is that. I hope you've enjoyed this little uh, feature video. If you have, hit the like button and whack that subscribe button. And hopefully I'll catch you again sometime soon for another video. If you've got any suggestions or comments, 